How do you know that heaven, hell, and purgatory exist? Has anyone ever been there? Has anyone ever returned and told us about these places? In actual fact, there are a number of saints who have experienced heaven, hell, and purgatory. Saints including St. Stephen, St. Paul, St. John Bosco, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Faustina, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Francis of Rome, St. Padre Pio, St. John Riviani, St. Gemma Galgani. That's just uh, naming a few. The saints have seen these places and they have returned and given reliable testimonies. In fact, God has allowed this so they could share knowledge with us to warn us. In the month of November, we pray for the holy souls in purgatory. And as we pray for them, it's very important to have in our minds what those souls in purgatory are experiencing, what they're going through. Maybe it will encourage us to pray for the holy souls more, to help them through our love, through our charity. In this sermon, I want to give us an idea of what purgatory is like by reading, by hearing from some of the saints who have seen that place. So this is a bit of a tour guide through purgatory, through the writings, through the visions of the saints. Of course, I could have used many more accounts. I could have used the writings, even the imaginary writings of Dante, who gives very interesting description of what purgatory is like. But instead, I want to look at, look at purgatory more thematically, experience the experience of purgatory, because whilst purgatory is a place, it is probably defined more by the experience of being in purgatory. And there are three things that St. Catherine of Genoa, St. Faustina, St. Padre Pio tell us about purgatory. Three things that each one, each one focuses in on a different aspect of purgatory and we're going to learn from them. We learn that purgatory is a place of sorrow for sin, it's a place of suffering, and it's a place of joy. So, first of all, purgatory is a place of sorrow for sin. In fact, sorrow for sin is the main essence of purgatory. St. Catherine of Genoa, she'd lived, lived the life of a typical mum with a large family she made sure she got to sunday mass but at one point in her in her life was fairly lukewarm in her faith but then one day march the 20th 1473 she was given a clear vision of her own wretchedness and shortcomings and at the same time of god's goodness it was some kind of miraculous event. That's how she describes it. A clear vision of her own wretchedness and shortcomings and at the same time of God's goodness. It was a bit like the warning. You know, this this idea of the warning happening to everybody. Catherine of Genoa experienced a mini warning in herself. It maybe it happened in prayer. But all of a sudden, she knew exactly where she stood before God. And that experience changed the way she lived her life. Catherine went on to write more about purgatory than any other saint. And that's because she thought that in that miraculous instant, she had a taste of what purgatory was really like. It reminds me of the children of Fatima, you know, when the, the light comes down from Our Lady's hands and they see themselves as God sees themselves. St. Catherine said that anyone who has ever realized the holiness and the goodness of God and then been struck by their own unworthiness and their own wretched sinfulness, that person has tasted something of the experience of purgatory. In fact, Almighty God showed St. Catherine a vision of the souls in purgatory. And she said that the sorrow of the souls in purgatory was for them like an inner fire. The souls in purgatory have a burning feeling inside of them that comes from the deep contrition they have for their past sins and for their love of God, who they've offended and who they are separated from by their sins. Probably 
most of our experiences of sorrow for sin are really only trivial to the degree felt by the holy souls because they have seen God and they really know his holiness and they really know how much even one small sin defiles defiles the soul and makes it unworthy of God's presence but even from our experiences we can appreciate something of the first quality of purgatory the first quality that defines our tour of purgatory if you were to go to purgatory this is something that you would notice more than anything else that it is a place of sorrow for sin the second quality of purgatory in our tour it is a place of suffering we cannot get away from that it is a place of suffering saint faustina she is our guide through this aspect of purgatory saint faustina the polish nun she met with many souls from purgatory they would come to her they would visit her bedroom and would ask for her prayers in all these cases saint faustina said that the visions she had were of people suffering of people being purged of their sins in flames of undergoing a painful purification to make them fit to enter the all holy presence of god we read in the book of revelation that god is all holy and no impurity can enter into his presence the book of hebrews adds our god is a consuming fire it isn't clear how the soul suffers from a fire when it long, no longer has a body to feel but in some way this must be the case because in every apparition of a soul from purgatory the soul reports how painful it is to be in purgatory and how the sufferings of this life don't even compare to the agonies of purgatory saint faustina writes one night a sister who had died two months previously came to me i saw her in a terrible condition all in flames with her face painfully distorted this lasted only a short time and then she disappeared a shudder went through my soul because i did not know whether she was suffering in purgatory or in hell after her experience of purgatory saint faustina wrote the following prayer most merciful jesus you yourself have said that you desire mercy so i bring into the abode of your most compassionate heart the souls in purgatory souls who are very dear to you and yet who must make retribution to your justice may the streams of blood and water which gush forth from your heart put out the flames of the purifying fire that in that place too the power of your mercy may be praised my friends the more we consider how much suffering there will be in purgatory the more serious we should get about praying for those poor souls there because just as saint faustina found out our prayers make a real difference for them you know she had she had a saint one of these souls in purgatory appeared to her when that person had made it to heaven thanking her for bringing her to heaven through her prayers by aiding her her journey through purgatory into heaven by her prayers also by thinking about the suffering in purgatory we should get extra determination to avoid purgatory altogether as much as we can by doing penance for our sins in this life by going to confession regularly by wearing the brown scapula of our lady and by making constant acts of love and sorrow to god for all the evils we have done that way we will reduce or perhaps even avoid altogether the amount of purification we will need in those fires of purgatory but just before we are too frightened about purgatory we should remember it is still completely unlike hell because in purgatory there is also a great degree of joy that is the third quality that some of the saints refer to 
when they speak of purgatory, that it is a place of joy. There is a great joy because the souls in purgatory know that heaven is approaching, that their salvation is assured, that the trials of this life are over and that they have died as friends of Jesus Christ and that before long they will be with him and the saints in an, in an unending paradise. St. Padre Pio, we all know him, the Franciscan friar who lived in the 20th century. Like St. Faustina, many souls in purgatory would visit him. They would ask for his prayers. He also had daily conversations with his guardian angel and was a friend of all guardian angels. Because he knew the angels so well, Padre Pio said that one of the greatest joys in purgatory was the frequent visits you receive from your guardian angel. Your holy angel will bring you consolation and encouragement. He will tell you about your loved ones on earth and he will rejoice with you as each day you become more purified, closer to being ready for him to escort you into the presence of God. Imagine that, the guardian angels continually entering purgatory. That certainly will be a very familiar sight in that abode of suffering and sorrow. So even though there is great suffering and great sorrow in purgatory, the souls there also have a happiness beyond all words. In fact, they gladly undergo the pains of purgatory because they know that it is preparing them to be with God. They know that by this purification, they can get to be with the one they are made for. And they can reach eternal happiness and the company of the saints. My friends, make the resolution to be faithful to praying for these holy souls in purgatory because their pains and suffering are beyond any earthly pain. Our faith teaches us that we can help them by our prayers and by the masses we have offered for them. If we die in God's friendship and make it to purgatory, we will then be in the same position as they are now. So make sure to pass on the practice of praying for the holy souls to your children and your family members. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May the souls, may their souls, and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.